we are going to start step two of our uh, chicken pot pie. So we already um, cooked the chicken in the Instapot and shredded it up. I have a cup of the white meat and a cup of the dark meat with the left, the rest of the two cups of chicken broth that we cooked it in, just so we have extra flavor in it. Um, in our big pan here, we have uh, two tablespoons of butter that we're melting that we're gonna um, saute our vegetables in. So I have about a half a cup of celery chopped up, and I have about a cup of onions chopped up. This is actually half of a Valdalia. I mess that up every time. Um, that I had in the fridge, so I figured it would just be a, a good onion to use. Um, you can use a regular yellow onion or white onion, whatever you like. Get that going. And then um, I also have some mushrooms that I want to get in there. We want to make sure that we sweat those out because we don't want that extra liquid to be in the pot pie. So we're going to put those in with the onions and celery and let those cook for a little bit. So over here I also have a 9 by 13 pan. That's actually what we're going to bake it in. So we're going to spray that off in a minute and um, prep that. I have the oven set at 400. So in this second step, we're gonna make sure that we build the base of the pot roast, or I'm sorry, chicken pot pie. But then um, after that, we're gonna make the biscuits so we can put them right on top. So, you know, there are a few steps to this project and there are some hacks if you, want, if you don't wanna do these steps. You actually could um, buy the chicken, like I said, a rotisserie chicken and just pull that off. And then um, you could buy like biscuits in the tube where you crack them and they pop. A lot of people like those, but when you're trying to control the sodium, you know, it's really hard to find those low sodium options. So this way I know exactly how much sodium is going to be in the whole dish. So in this bowl, I have about a cup of carrot and peas, you know, like frozen carrot and peas. And then also I have about a cup of the corn that I froze. Um, when corn was in season this summer. So I'm super excited to use that. So that's been kind of sitting out thawing. It's not 100% thaw yet, but it'll be fine. It'll uh, cook really nicely in here with the onions and the uh, celery. So while that's sauteing and we're getting that liquid out of there, um, in here I have a, ta a teaspoon, sorry, of garlic powder and a teaspoon of garlic onion. Again, we're just building those layers of flavor, and um, I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, cracked black pepper in here as well. So get that in there. Probably like, maybe a tablespoon. Probably depends on how, you know, peppery you like your food. So you can see that's coming together nicely, all those pretty colors. And if there's any of these vegetables that you don't like, you don't have to put them in here. You know, if you're not super excited about mushrooms, don't put them in. It's totally cool. So it's getting nice and uh, all that fluid is getting absorbed. And the cool thing about this is you don't really have to let these cook very long. I mean, peas cook like that, carrots are cut up really small, and then it's going to bake in the oven. So you don't have to worry about them being 100% cooked through. And our chicken is already cooked, so we don't have to worry about that. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna put in uh, a half a cup of flour. And now we're gonna start building our thickener. Thickener? I'm struggling today with my words. All right, so we're just gonna shake that around on top of the uh, veggies. You know, it's kind of like making gravy. If you guys uh, make homemade gravy, this is a similar way of doing it. And you wanna, you know, cook that flour for a few minutes because you don't want that flour taste in, in your food. You want to cook it off so it's a little toasty. So we're going to go ahead and let that cook for a few minutes. And you can see it's already just absorbed whatever fluid was in there. Now, we might decide we need a little extra flour, which I have sitting right behind me for the biscuits. So no worries there. All right, I am going to go ahead and... I'm gonna put the milk in first. So we have a cup of milk that we're gonna go ahead and put in there. So as you can see, this is a pretty rich um, dish. And 
you know, I'm doing the best I can to make it as low sodium and <laughs> low fat as possible. But this is probably one of those recipes that you don't want to eat every day. This is kind of a once or twice a year kind of recipe. So as you can see, that flour is absorbing um, all of that milk. So it's going to be nice and rich. And then I'm just going to pour in, I kind of cheated and put all the chicken and the broth together. So we're going to pour that in all together. Oh my gosh, does not look good. And um, I have to say I cheated and I tasted the chicken and um, with that rosemary and garlic in there, it has an amazing flavor. So you can see, if you've ever made uh, pot pie before, this looks just like how it starts to uh, come together. Shred up that chicken a little bit more. And then we're gonna let it um, simmer for a few minutes to help the uh, flour and all of the liquids uh, thicken up. Make sure I didn't forget anything. I actually am gonna take a taste of this and see if maybe we wanna add a little more rosemary. So once we get it coming to a boil, we'll uh, take a little taste. And I have a handy dandy, ooh, I don't wanna miss that flour, look at that. That'll help thicken it up. Okay guys, we're ready for step three of our chicken pot pie. So we roasted the chicken in the Instapot and we mixed all the veggies and chicken and uh, made a like a sauce like a chicken thickened chicken broth and um, now we're gonna make the biscuits so you know some people make pot pie in an actual pie crust but when you're trying to maybe watch calories or watch your sodium having the biscuits on top make it a little bit easier for that portion control so I have in this bowl um, three cups of just regular you know all-purpose flour and I'm going to add to it four teaspoons of basically no sodium baking powder and a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar. So I wanted to share with you the Hain Pure, Fu Pur Pur Pure Foods, oh my gosh, um, featherweight baking powder is sodium free and gluten free. Um, I found this at Whole Foods. I couldn't remember where I bought it and I had used it all up. So. Um, they have it at Whole Foods, but you can also order it online. But it's much cheaper if you go to Whole Foods. But if you don't have a Whole Foods by you, then you know you got to do what you got to do. So we're going to mix those dry ingredients together and get that all incorporated and throw some flour on the floor. That's just a little bit of a lot of flour that will probably end up on the floor with this. So then um, what I did was I took three fourths cup of unsalted butter. Um, or what is that 12 tablespoons and I basically used a cheese grater see the cheese grater here and I grated it because you want your butter to be super cold but you also you know want it to be kind of pea size so that's kind of a little trick on how to get your butter easily chopped up because it's not super easy to cut a cold stick of butter so um, I use that same technique for my scones and it makes them really light and fluffy. So we're gonna stir that in. And as you all know, you know, you don't wanna mix this too much because you wanna keep that butter as cold as possible. So having it shredded up like that really helps you incorporate it. You don't even really need a pastry cutter unless you wanna use one. Um, so we're gonna mix this all together. There's a big chunk right there we wanna mix up. And so as you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but you can see those little flakes of butter in there, and um, that's gonna help add those layers to the biscuit. All right, so obviously when you're normally making biscuits, you wanna add, I think it's like a half a teaspoon of salt, but we're just leaving that out completely, and we're using unsalted butter. So we really wanna make sure that, um, you know, we control the sodium. But to help with flavor, I'm gonna use a cup of buttermilk instead of regular milk and I'm just going to stir that in pretty soon I'm ready can I have to start using my hands but we're going to start like this pour that in there and we also need one egg so I have a egg here that we'll put in we're going to mix that all together and it's going to start to come together into like a sticky ball And I'm gonna put some 
flour out on the uh, counter here. So maybe a little more. We have a space that we can roll those out. All right, I think it's time to start using our hands. It's gonna get a little messy up in here. Oops, I should bring that back in here. I honestly think we might need a little more liquid, but let's put it out here and see what we can do. together. I actually think I'm going to put a little more liquid on that. I'm just going to grab this milk over here. I mean, that's not buttermilk. We'll just put a little dab like right there. Help us bring it all together. There we go. Much better. All right. All right, we need to flour up our rolling pin here. So we roll it out. We wanna roll it out till it's about three quarters to an inch thick. So you gotta kinda of eyeball it. It's like making sugar cookies. We really need that to stay together. Okay guys, we just took the biscuits out of the oven and I just wanted to show you how flaky they are. Let me open one up here. Oh, ooh, that's hot pan. But as you can see, they're super flaky. Um, and that's, I mean, they're not golden brown because we didn't put butter on top of them, but they're still browned on the top and the bottom. So these turned out super great. Um, let me try this one. See the flakiness in that one? You can see the separate layers um, where that butter was uh, still cold and kept it separate. So um, if you're looking to make biscuits without having a ton of sodium in it, you know, not buying the tube that you pop open, these are super simple. And um, remember to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm Christy from Christy Cooks for Life. And if you want more recipes and videos like this, you can find them on YouTube. So make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is also Christy Cooks for Life. Thanks, and remember to make every meal a heart-healthy meal. Thanks, and have a great day.